Hi everyone, today I'm going to be analyzing and reviewing Utada Hikaru's latest single, Manatsu no Toriyame. So this song came out in full on the same day as Hanataba, but surprisingly it only peaked at number 5 on Billboard Japan. Uh, I was surprised because I thought this was the stronger track of the two. The song was also used as a TV show theme song. It is used by New Zero, which I was also surprised by because it is such a deeply sad and depressing song. <laughs> so the single covers for both of these songs are kind of similar. They're both using white with another color, namely pink and blue. And I'm not sure if those colors have any kind of symbolism towards their respective songs. This song's cover is blue and white, and I think the blue might be referencing the rain, the color of the rain. Even though water isn't actually blue, um, we often associate blue with water. Pink, I'm not entirely sure what it has to do with Hanatabu wo Kimini. It might be referring to flowers, like pink flowers or roses or something like that. Also, so one of the very first lyrics in it is about makeup, so maybe it's like pink makeup or something. So yeah, I mentioned this in a live show I did while I was in Japan right after the songs came out uh, where I was kind of discussing with you guys the new songs kind of generally. But I really really love Utari Karu's usage of Japanese in both of these songs. She doesn't use English, like both of them have a somewhat long title, they're almost like a sentence in of their own. And she doesn't use any like English hooks or catchphrases like a lot of J-pop and K-pop does. It's purely Japanese. Specifically in this song, I really liked how Utada seems to tie some of the notes or syllables together in a somewhat complex way. And there's a lot of symbolism in this song um, tying into the title. So in the first verse, um, I thought it might be about a lover or something like that, but I think this song is probably about Utari Karo's mom again. I think this one is a little bit less obvious in some parts, um, and then in like other parts it's it seems to be really driving that point. She's talking about waking up sweaty from a dream that might be kind of like a childhood memory where her mom would like comfort her after having a nightmare or something like that. And kind of similar to Hanataba, the song starts out with a very gentle piano medley and it sort of gains um, a little bit of power as we head into the chorus. I absolutely love these parts in the song where Utara is kind of belting high and she says Oshiete a couple times in the song and that to me really emphasizes this sense of desperation. Oshiete means like to be shown. She says Oshiete Hoshi, which is like, I want to be shown, I want to know. She's expressing a lot of frustration in not being able to figure out the way she's feeling or tell someone her feelings. I actually don't particularly like this one part in the song where she's saying like, I'm not alone, I'm okay, and then she kind of finishes the verse with like, that's what I'm trying to tell myself, I'm convincing myself of that, but she sings it in this kind of like melodramatic, like drawn out way where the instrumentals kind of halt and there's like serious piano chords to emphasize it. I thought that would just like cross the border into being a little bit too cheesy. I thought that could have been a little more subtle. And I think it was you blog on Twitter, but they pointed out when this song came out that there is some more nature references in this. There's a couple of references to trees and leaves. So I feel like that is a major symbol for life and Something I feel has come through in Otari Karu's lyrics before is the feeling of being devastated and then seeing the world around you moving on but you feel like you're standing still being totally separate from it. She says right now there are so many questions and I feel like that is another point supporting that this is about her mother. You know, if it was someone who was still alive, she could ask them those questions probably. And because her mother took her own life so suddenly, I'm sure that there are a lot of questions surrounding that for her. There is a lyric in this song that seems to be confusing to quite a lot of fans and I am definitely included in that but I've been trying to think about it and I've done a little bit of my own translating for some parts of the song and in particular that lyric is Jiyu ni naru, Jiyu ni aru and I've seen some translations of that where they've translated as there is a freedom to being free you are free. If we break it down, nadu is the verb to become. So she's saying become free and then she says aru which is here or to exist, so you are able to become free is basically what she's trying to say. That is what I'm interpreting it as anyway. And I think translating that directly into English makes it kind of stand out. There doesn't seem to be a lot of context for that one phrase once it's translated. Japanese often omits the subject, so she's not saying like, you have the, the freedom to become free, or I have it, or anyone. And then directly after that she says, shadows of people seeing someone depart are standing still. And to me, that really paints this picture 
picture of her watching her mom kind of fade away from her. That feeling of standing apart from the world moving on. And it's really, really sad. This whole song is unbelievably sad. Another lyric I found different translations of was Aishitemasu naomo fukaku So she's saying I'm loving you Aishitemasu is like current tense basically Naomo fukaku Fukaku is deeply and now is spelled with the kanji It's not the slang like now for now Now is like even or still So she's saying like I love you so much even now And right after that she finally says or finally sings Manatsu no Toriyame and it's so moving to me that part she finally sings the the title of the song and it's like two-thirds of the way through the song as she leads up to that that phrase there's like a driving sense behind the piano notes right after she says that this kind of double beat kicks in and it reminds me of like running footsteps this whole song is just weaving together this, this picture of desperation and the string arrangement comes in it's so beautiful and then she sings about this idea she had of a future where this person we're thinking it's her mom was and ever since this has happened she can't go back to that picture of the future that she had and that's sort of tying back to the beginning of the song where she couldn't return to the dream she was just having so i thought that was really poetic how she kind of tied that maybe childhood memory to this current scenario that she feels like she's in so i absolutely love this song i'm 1000 percent happy with this song i feel like utada just wove together this beautiful beautiful song so much poetry in the lyrics and i absolutely loved everything about the instrumentals from the basic piano melody to the sort of more intense synth track she introduced at the, the latter half of the song and I feel like the whole theme of the song and the title and everything Manatsu no Toriyame which I don't think I even said it yet it translates to midsummer showers rain showers specifically <laughs> she emphasizes in the song that it's unending and to me a uh, rain shower in summer is kind of like the startling halt like summer is this beautiful nice time and then all of a sudden it's interrupted by Rain. And at the end of the song, there's kind of these background vocals lightly repeating this phrase that in the midst of the never-ending rain, my thirst will never be quenched. So because of this situation of sadness, she will never find a sense of closure or she thinks she'll never be happy again or the questions she wants to ask will never be satisfied. So yeah, this song gives me a lot of anticipation for the new album. I'm hoping there will be other amazing tracks like this on the album. So the video for this song went in kind of the same vein as Sakura Nagashi. Utari Kara was not in the video and it's a lot of clips of kind of random people. To me, the clips seem like they're people going about their lives, um, particularly doing things that they really love or maybe something they just really enjoy and to me that kind of made this feeling of like Utada. Hikaru is watching them and that is going back to the point where she is like this shadow watching her mother move away from her, drift away from her and ultimately pass away. I don't know if you guys got that impression but yeah I, I love the video even though she's not in it. I think the shots are beautiful and I think they're timed very nicely with the musical beats. So what did you guys think of this song and video and the lyrics behind it, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Hi everyone, it's well past the time when I should have reviewed and done analyses for Utari Karu's new songs and I will start today with Hanata wo Kimi ni. The title for the song translates to Bouquet for You and it was released on April 15th of this year and it's used as the theme song for a morning drama called Toto Nechan. Originally I thought that Utara didn't 